Hey everyone, Garbage here. Lately, there's been a lot of renewed interest in old school PlayStation 1 graphics because PlayStation 1 games look really cool. But I hardly ever hear anyone talking about PlayStation 2 graphics despite being very fascinating as well. And so today, I'm going to change that. The first major advantage the PS2 had over the PS1 was more RAM, meaning that it was able to utilize higher quality textures in its in-game models. PS1 textures tended to be very pixelated because while it could handle textures up to 256 by 256 pixels, it was much more common to use 128 and 64 pixel textures to save on memory. The PS2, however, could handle textures up to 512 by 512, though it was very common to use smaller textures as well, which combined with the ability to display full 24-bit color made PS2 models look sharper and more lifelike than ever before, despite the fact that at the time it was still common to use low-poly models. Another big thing the PS2 could do was texture filtering, which reduces the appearance of jagged pixels on textures and makes them look smoother, something that wasn't possible on the PS1. Another major improvement was in lighting technology. Most PS1 games did not use any real-time lighting whatsoever and relied entirely on textures, vertex colors, and pre-rendered environments to convey any sense of light. However, things are different on the PS2. Not every game did this, but a common way to light a scene in a PS2 game is to start with a flat ambient light that fills the entire scene and then add a light source to create highlights and shadows, all of which could be done in real time. This is pretty much how it works in modern video games, but one major difference is in how the shading works. These days games use something called Fong shading to get smooth looking surfaces, where lighting is calculated on a pixel by pixel basis, but the PS2 instead used something called Gorod shading, which only calculates light at the vertices of the 3D mesh, and then connects the spaces in between with a smooth gradient to make it look more natural. This is often referred to as per vertex lighting, and it's good for performance and it looks pretty decent but as you can see, it sometimes results in these jagged shadows at the edges. Now, you have to remember that at the time, the vast majority of console gamers were playing on standard definition CRT televisions, which blurred the image a bit and added their own visual artifacts, and so things like jagged shadows weren't nearly as noticeable as they are now. And in a lot of ways, the equipment that people were using at the time has influenced people's perception of how games from this generation looked. A big reason why PS1 games have such a distinct appearance is because of the console's severe hardware limitations, which every game developer had to work with, and this resulted in PS1 games all having a somewhat similar look with similar visual quirks. The famous wobbly textures and dithering in PS1 games are not present in the PS2, and in general, developers had way more freedom to experiment with unique visual styles and techniques thanks to the PS2's increased power, which meant that there really wasn't a distinct and clearly identifiable PS2 to look, and maybe that's why there aren't any YouTube videos explaining how to create PS2 graphics. It's just not that easy to talk about when you have everything from bright cartoony games to dark realistic games, flat cell shaded games, and anime style games, and more all in a single console. But hey, hope you learned something today. Let me know about any other video game related thing you'd like me to explain. Come check out my second channel and Twitch channel where I stream all sorts of games whenever I feel like it. Join the Discord, follow me on Twitter, like, subscribe, and bell. Links to everything down in the description below. And as always, have a nice day.